In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the future value function within the NumPy financial module. And NumPy financial used to be included in the full version of NumPy, but in version 1.17, it was split out. And it's essentially a small module with a handful of financial based functions that are basically indistinguishable from their counterparts in Excel, but generally they're just a little bit better. So if you don't already have this package installed, you're going to run this command and you can run it right within the notebook if you proceed it with that exclamation point. Otherwise, you can run it from the command line. And uh, once you have NumPy Financial installed, we're just going to go ahead and import it and take a look at the version. Okay, so, so far, we're just on version one of this. I expect that they will be uh, continuing to develop this module. We can also just take a look at what functions are included in there. Okay, so you can see the first one is future value. All right, and then some of these other functions may be familiar to you as well. Uh, we can get an interest payment, an internal rate of return, modified internal rate of return, number of periods in a loan, net present value, a traditional loan payment, principal payment, future value, and uh, we can determine an implied rate of interest as well. All right, so as I mentioned, we're gonna be looking at the future value function. And so I'm just gonna start by taking a look at the help for that. All right, and these functions are very well documented. All right, so here's the basic usage up at the top. We call future value function. Uh, we input an interest rate, which is an annual interest rate, or depending on how frequently uh, interest compounds, uh, you could modify that rate to match it. All right, we have the number of periods in the future we're gonna be looking at, and then uh, if we're adding something to this at the end of every period, uh, then we would input it here, and then uh, the current value of our investment. And then the last argument is optional. And it, it basically says, when are we gonna add this payment if there's a payment at the beginning of the period or at the end of the period? If you wanna read more about it, right, you can call this help. And uh, I'm actually gonna make this notebook available from a link in the description of the video. All right, but we have enough to get started down here. So what I'm gonna do is start defining a few variables. So we'll get our interest rate and I'll just decide it's 9%. Uh, we'll get our number of periods, all right, and I'll just use T, and I'll say we'll go out five years. Uh, we'll get our payment, which uh, is going to be zero. Okay, we'll get our present value, and I'll just decide that it's 100,000. Okay, and since there's no payment, it doesn't matter if I use that optional last argument or not. All right, so let's just take a look at what this returns. All right, and then by convention, the present value and the payment, if there were a payment, should appear as negative numbers since you know we're making an investment and uh, we don't have that money available. That's the rationale there. But basically, if I don't make them negative, the future value is gonna come out negative. All right, so let's take a look at what that gets us. Okay, so we can see, yep, yeah, it gives us, uh, we started off with 100,000, gives us 153, close to 154,000. All right, and then we get a lot of precision out here with the with the decimal. Okay, so I'll just reformat that. I'll, I'll enclose it in a print function, and I'll put it in an F string. I'll enclose this in curly braces, put in a dollar sign, and then I will format this with two decimal places. Okay, so there's our future value. All right, if we wanna take a look at uh, what it would be if I actually have a payment, make an addition every year, I'll make it 7,000. And then, yeah, once again, uh, if I don't make this negative, it's gonna assume that I'm withdrawing that 7,000 every year. Okay, so we can see the benefit of that annual addition for five years. So at the beginning, I mentioned that these functions are generally better than Excel. Okay, and what I really should say is that some of the functionality that you may want if you're examining uh, something like this is easier to accomplish with NumPy Financial than in Excel. All right, so if I wanna do a sensitivity analysis and see how sensitive our ending balance is to the interest rate, that's generally a little bit easier here than in Excel. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is set up a rates variable, and then I'm going to convert it to a percentage. So essentially what we're gonna end up with here is a list of interest rates 
from 4 to 9 percent. Okay, and then to get that output, we're just going to once again call that future value function. Instead of a single rate, I'm going to enter the list of rates. Right, we're going to hold everything else constant. And you can see that, okay, instead of just getting the one output and having to maybe write this line of code five times, uh, we just write it once and the function actually runs five times and gives us all the different outputs at different levels of interest. Okay, if we want to format it a little bit more nicely, I'll go ahead and print a little table. So once again, in an F string. Okay, so our table heading. Okay, so I'll just reformat, get a nicer looking table. All right, and then I'm just going to actually loop through and get each one of those values. All right, so before I do this, I'm going to have to go ahead and define a variable here. So I'll just call it future value. And then I'm going to pass in that list into a loop and display both the interest rate and then the corresponding ending value below or beside. Okay, I'm going to format the each output as a, a little string. So the, the dollar sign stays with the string. Okay, and then we'll just print out each interest rate and balance. Okay, let's take a look at that. Okay, so there is our output and our sensitivity analysis of the interest rate. Okay, so pretty much all the arguments in the future value function will allow you to put in either a single value or a list or array of values. All right, so one more example, I guess we could look at what happens if you hold the money for a longer period of time in the investment. Okay, so for this one, what I'll do is I'll make a list for the time and we'll hold it for between five and nine years. Okay, so with our time being tested here, what I'm going to do is just copy, paste, and make a couple of changes. All right, so we'll just look at that one interest rate and just to get an idea of what our output is, there it is. Okay, and then I'll copy this and make a couple of changes there. Okay, my table probably needs to be reformatted, but let's take a look at this. And we'll just go out of, looks like about four more places. There it is. All right, so we can see what happens if we're able to hold the money longer in the investment. Okay, so lots of possibilities here with the future value function, and I hope that helps you get started.